For 20 years, I was a park ranger in California and in Oregon, both state parks and county parks. And I am retired, have been retired for about 13 years. Well, fiber art uh, especially, well, fiber art gives you the freedom to produce what you want. The key thing that really appealed to me about it is there are no rules. You paint with fabric, and uh, then you can explore beyond just the fabric. How about different threads? How about shiny things? How about beads? How about different kinds of interwoven textured stuff? There's possibilities are unlimited, and that really appeals to me. My designs are most often uh, nature inspired, and. One of my favorite places to go uh, to uh, collect some photos uh, that I like to take is around a pond that's local in the area and catch a shot of some wildlife. I just thrive being outside when the different things that I see as I hike along the trails or just take a walk uh, or go birding is there are certain things that just makes you pause and say, wow. I don't have to keep uh, looking for how the crease is in the flower or where the leaf bends or something like that. Sometimes I start out doing it like that and something takes over and all of a sudden I'm not looking at any representation at all. I'm just going with the flow and that's when the magic starts to happen. I do do custom work, yes, uh, within certain parameters. The important part for me is to gain an understanding from the person who wants to purchase the art, if it's where I'm close enough to the person where I could go to their home and get a feel for the atmosphere of where it's going to be. Uh, if I don't have that, I want some more specifics from them. Different materials, uh, some will be very soft, and some of them will be very radical. And batiks are a wonderful blending type fabric and their colors are more realistic. But then you can find fabric that's printed in geometric styles. Living in Oregon, I have artwork in the local gallery in Springfield. That's the Emerald Art Center, which is a learning center and a gallery. So most of my artwork travels a lot more than I do. I have pieces, uh, permanent pieces, in the uh, National Quilting Museum in Paducah, Kentucky. If you're an art quilter, that's a, a good place to be. And another piece I have at the University of Chicago Medical Center. I have three pieces that have uh, just been shipped to New Mexico, and they will be in the reception uh, starting in May. Uh, to which I will go this time. I'll, I'll be there with my pieces when the, uh, on opening night. And from there, they will travel for the next two years at different places. Another piece in New Mexico was purchased by a collector. I've recently uh, been invited to participate in a, a World Art Quilters Challenge. And the piece that I have in it has been accepted and it will travel first to Japan, and then to France, and then back to the United States. And that will be in a three-year process. When you see a quilter coming in, an art quilter come into a show, you always know when she is an artist or he is an artist because her face is about three inches away from the piece, examining the way the thread is stitched or how is the binding done. Uh, so. Yes, the, the popularity, it draws out a lot of the artists to come and look at uh, other artwork that is in the same field that they're in. It's a mutual admiration society, really. I use uh, mostly batiks as far as fabric is concerned because it's a finely woven fabric that takes a lot of multiple stitching, whereas a loose, uh, less 
quality fabric might fray and fall apart. If I have a, a cheek of um, a bear that, that might want to be sticking out a little bit, I will leave a little bit of room to put some fill in there, some fiber fill to make it a little bit more puffy. So there's more topography to the piece. And I like to use the faced binding, which doesn't really show, but it creates a nice strong edge that's clean and uh, does, is protecting the piece. Well, my major tool is my sewing machine, and it's a basic homemaker's sewing machine. It's not a fancy machine at all. Uh, the only drawback of that is that the throat, which is the distance between our needle and the engine on the machine, is only about four and a half, five inches. So my pieces are, are not huge, uh, not six foot pieces, uh, at least on this machine. Uh, other tools that are most important to me, one of my favorites is a, a little pair of scissors that have curl, curved blades where I can snip my threads really close to the surface. So no little hanging threads are visible. That's important to me and my pieces. And of course the rotary cutter, which is what you use to cut fabric, very neat and sharp blade and it, it makes great cuts. I probably have about six pair of scissors and each for a different thing. Another tool that's important to an art quilter is the cutting board. And uh, a cutting board typically has one inch measurements on it, uh, a long length measurement for the entire board that you can place your fabric on and you can cut on without marring the the board itself. So I have a pressing board which is about oh, 18 inches by 24 inches and uh, I have a very basic simple iron that uh, will have steam in it or not. An iron and an iron board is used throughout the whole process so I have it very handy uh, just around behind my machine. I can swivel in my chair and turn over and, and press the fabric and go right back to the machine again. Having this, uh, having art quilts as an art form has provided me a great relief uh, from stress, everyday stress and strain of, of life. When I go into my studio, all the concerns and cares of everyday life are just not important anymore. And I can go in there and let my creative juices flow and everything else is very unimportant.